Hi everyone, Bob is in the house and tonight we have a Barcelona breakdown <laughs> pretty much of their summer window like I have no script I have I have not thought about this even but uh, before making this video but I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be doing fine because all I did throughout this uh, couple of months is just to think about this team to think about their drama what they were doing and it was a, it's a, it was an insane uh, period of time this transfer window that was like from uh, like July till October it has been freaking crazy and um yeah we just i'm glad it's finally over everybody can like breathe out and like relax finally because this uh board uh barcelona like the most dumb board i've ever seen in my entire life well they they uh you know hopefully will not another get another chance uh to get hands on like with the transfers but at the same time i gotta say i gotta say when what I was talking about um, a couple months ago when I did an uh, initial video when we, when we were looking uh, forward like okay what what we can do now to improve after the shittiest uh, loss we had uh, after uh, with Bayern Munich and A2 what we can do we were talking about okay we gotta sell these people these people and mo a lot of them actually exited the club um, which I mean which is good I guess <laughs> at the same time it was heartbreaking because a lot of those people were huge huge stars and important part of our history at this point and still you you understood that it's like uh these people should leave but at the same time you had heartache over here oh no it's it's still sad though i didn't know it's gonna be that sad especially when luis suarez is gonna be leaving but uh, again th th those things needed to happen and uh i'm glad they happened at the end of the day i'm glad they happened and then we were also talking about okay what about uh people that should be playing now in the club and we were talking about coaching a little bit i was actually not sure if our new coach whatever uh, at that time whoever it will be now we know it's ronald kuman I, I was not sure if coutinho will implement him but i wanted a uh, new coach to be, uh, implement coutinho but at the same time i was not sure but i like coutinho i like coutinho as a player i always supported him when he was in liverpool for example and i was so happy when he moved uh, to us uh but anyway uh, we, we're gonna be talking we're gonna be analyzing about what we were predicting and then what happened and um you know we just um let's do it <laughs> let's just let's freaking do it so i wrote um who barcelona bought uh and i wrote down who barcelona sold and then looking back i mean we still gotta say that the, this swap barcelona made the juventus is the most dumbest thing we've ever seen in this history of our club <laughs> well uh, I'm, I'm just exaggerating it's probably not true of course i mean there there they had to be probably boards transfer but i cannot remember any uh, <laughs> because like how can you uh like substitute arthur who is only 23 years old still have showing a lot of promise and we uh, like a lot of people a lot of barcelona fans including me loved this guy to just freaking substitute to a 30 year old person who is gonna be depart who is gonna be leaving this club in three years for sure um and just like it's no the longevity is arthur has much more longevity than pianic and then he's not gonna be progressing uh especially we know that fc barcelona like like the last few years if you look at people who were coming in they were they're they're not becoming better players actually they were becoming worse players if you look at antoine griezmann like that the guy is literally the champion of the world because excuse me champion of the world because uh he was really good before before coming to barcelona but now what happened now what happened to the guy anyway though we're not gonna see progress over here and i'm not saying he's a bad player he's a good player but I mean, anyway, well, <laughs> it, well, we, we already pa be, uh, passed beyond it, I hope, uh, because I mean, we already talked about it before. So let's move on to Trinkau. Uh, Trinkau, we, we bought this guy and it's good, it's good. Uh, we have, and we sold Luis Suarez, um, which 
again, I really wanted Luis Suarez, I mean, okay, I really love Luis Suarez and I actually had a Luis Suarez shirt because I really was inspired by his game. I, when um, there was Messi and Suarez Neymar MCN trio, uh, I went and bought Suarez jersey out of the three actually. Uh, yes, Neymar was amazing as well, but for some reason I just I just really wanted Luis Suarez shirt because I was really loving him at that time and uh, throughout his uh, career, I mean, pretty much no complaints when it comes to Luis Suarez, he's still a uh, top um, striker, yes, he was having bad games as well, but uh, who doesn't, and he's just a great player. And the third scorer uh, in Barcelona history, he scored like more than 200 goals, I believe. Anyway. Um, but it was, it was time to move on for both parties and Luis Suarez, I think it was a while, I thought when they were selling him, I thought it was the right move. Now, we don't have a striker. <laughs> With, Kuman wanted to bring in Tepai, but he could not make it and that's like the part where I was like, it's like a total, total mind talk because uh, we only have Braithwaite now and we will get to it later. But as a pure nine striker, uh, Roland Koeman, he doesn't have players now. He only has Braithwaite, but he's not even acknowledging him. He's like, okay, like he's saying, I, I needed number nine, I don't have number nine. He's not even acknowledging Braithwaite, he forgot that he exists. But at the same time, like, uh, how can we ju uh, judge Roland Koeman for that? <laughs> you know, like Braithwaite is okay, but he's not a world-class player. And now, since we couldn't buy anyone, this this uh, selling is looking weird. Like, why did we sell it, the guy? Maybe we could have keep Luis Suarez for one more year and then um, sell him. Anyway, so there is pluses and minuses. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I also uh, didn't say how I feel about the whole situation and like how, about the whole summer. Um, I should have stated that before, but. I actually am still glad. Um, I'm 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 excited about the new upcoming season because uh, they were able to do a lot of things that I was hoping them to do, and uh, now I'm actually excited. Especially after uh, the few games we had, it seems like Barcelona is uh, getting back on track. They're more intense. They're more running, especially, especially like they're not like just stale, slow. Uh, players at this point they are actually um, working hard it seems like they are actually putting some work uh, with, with the running <laughs> it's like uh, they're getting their stamina back you know what I'm saying so it's it's, it's good to, to see that for sure so that's why I was excited like after the first two games I was like damn like are we gonna buy uh, are we gonna win Champions League now <laughs> like I was getting too excited now about the freaking Champions League at this point maybe we will win because like we're actually uh, it seems like we're cured now. We're, we're the, at the top again, but um, <clears throat> yeah, new game with Sevilla. Uh, actually, worthy upon opponent showed that um, we might not be there yet. But um, there, and there are some issues still. We, uh, like that game with Sevilla, with uh, which ended one one. Um, we couldn't win that game. It's it uh, kind of landed us. Uh, it, it's sort of like pushed us down from the heavens from the dreams we were having already after the first two games um anyway let's let's finish this real quick and then we have something more exciting to come uh, coming um we have a uh, serginio dest new player um and uh, we also we sold semedo which that's the only one player like i was talking about vidal i was talking about rakitic i was talking about suarez that this player should leave the club but the only one player I really didn't want to leave, uh, which they made it happen, was Nelson Semedo. And Nelson Semedo, I mean, I, I just really like the guy. I mean, I don't know why. A lot of uh, our coaches, I mean, there was a third coach already, if we're counting kind of Roman Kuman. All of them, for some reason, maybe there, there was something, but for some reason, they were not really trusting the guy that much. Like, they would rather prefer um, Sergio Roberto um, instead of Nelson Semedo. Even if Sergio Roberto is actually a central midfielder, but they would put him as a right defender. Yes, he's capable of doing that, but uh, Nelson Semedo is the one who is actual right defender. 
and they, they would still play Roberto more than Smit. I was always angry at that. And then at the end of the freaking day, <laughs> uh, at the end of the Nelson Smith's career, they just sold him. And I, I they, they did that to uh, get the money in order to bring in uh, Sergio Dest, which is a United States um, player. And I'm happy about that. I mean, it's, it's good to see US representative. I'm not, uh, I was not born American, but I am an American now. And um, it just, it just uh, it's nice to see because in 2026, we're gonna be having World Cup, uh, soccer World Cup in the United States and Canada and Mexico too, but uh, United States as well. So um, I will be happy to see him in the national squad. Hopefully he will be there playing for United States and it would be amazing. It would be nice. And um, what else I wanted to say? So, but he, he's, I mean, I haven't really seen him play and people are saying though that he's a really good player, uh, but he's 21 and still there's a lot to go. But, uh, but Semedo, I mean, he was the one who already was in the club and uh, there was no need to adapt to anything, but um, they sold him because they didn't have money. They still wanted to bring in this new, new talent. And that's why they sold him. Anyway, well, okay, okay. Well, I'm I am mad, but at the same time, maybe this will be even better. We'll see. Um, and then we have Mateus Fernandez, who I don't know. I don't really know about him. Um, but he's like a central midfielder. We didn't see him at all, so we have to see. Uh, we have to wait uh, if he actually will be be part of the team. If he will be playing in actual games so we'll see how it goes i'm not sure i'm not sure what to say about that uh, transfer but i am happy because he's a replacement uh, pretty much to one of these guys to vidal uh Rakitic, and we, i mean uh, and then there was also rafinha we we had um, already different players like alenia and ricky push who are central midfielders we already had some of the players that were not getting the time they deserved and I really wanted to get that time. So hopefully now after the departure of Vidal and Rakic, they will be getting, but now it seems like it's weird because like I I'm angry at Ronald Koeman, because even though I'm, I'm really satisfied with his work so far. Um, and I'm, I'm very optimistic that he became coach because there is a lot of still right decisions he's making. And I'm glad that he's like a surgeon, like he's actually strict with these players. I I they, they needed that uh, because they were too in the comfort zone. But um, the, he, like one of the uh, negatives though, like he's not playing the youth squad as much as I as I wanted. And you, you youth, uh, young players, I was talking about Ricky Push and uh, Elenia, and um, there, there will be people I, I cannot remember right now, but there will be more. But um, um, let's see. Yeah, so, and we also brought in Pedri, we're gonna talk about him later a little bit. And then uh, people who are back, back from loan, we already talked about uh, Alenia. And there's Coutinho, already we talked about it, and I'm happy that he is back and he's playing, and he's playing well. It's freaking incredible. <laughs> and, um, okay, so what do we have? We we sold this guy, Miranda and Todibo. These two players, though, should have stayed, and I will mention about them later. I'm not sure why they departure these people, especially since they didn't really get the money as far as i know but now we kind of need them we actually do need them because we don't have enough players in defense and then uh, musa Vagi is another defender um but with dest and uh, sergio roberto okay i kind of understand why they departed musa Vagi. um and then akimi and monchu okay these two players that who are in loan they wouldn't get any playtime anyway if they stayed, so I'm fine with departures of these two people in loan, and then we'll see how they will progress there, the, and um, you know, we'll go from there. Especially if the new board will come in, hopefully the emphasis will be on younger players uh, and their developing, because FC Barcelona, um, especially in the last 15-20 years, it, it was about uh, La Masia, it was about our uh, Barcelona Academy and like a lot of stars that made FC Barcelona so successful like Lionel Messi, Gerard Pique, Xavi, Iniesta, they were all like Carlos Puyol, Valdez, they were all products of that academy. So 
I really want them to push for the academy players. I want them to support academy players. But now let's see what actually happened with all these changes, with a lot of people leaving, people coming in, uh, and also people from academy. What kind of squads now we have? Let's see. Let's check them out. So, in the last um, video a couple months ago, I was talking about I actually don't know how FC Barcelona will play in what structure, in what um, tactic or formation, and. Um, Back, back then I was talking, I was structuring the team in 4-3-3 but um, Ronald Koeman, um, he, he came in and he said okay we're gonna play in 4-2-3-1 now so now <laughs> we are structuring the team in 4-2-3-1 so what do we have? Ter Stegen is the same, I mean the, the goalkeepers didn't change and I wanted to that, I mean I was I didn't have a problem with our goalkeepers. They were they're fine quality, quality players. So Neto and Ter Stegen they're there, and then there's also defenders. I was also talking about how okay the main defenders pretty much there's no reason to change. So I was like Alba, Lenglet, PK, and uh, Semedo at that time it was. But they removed Semedo. Now they're playing with Roberto. Hopefully we will be seeing Dest more. I really hope that we will be seeing Dest even more than Sergio Roberto. It's not that I hate Sergio Roberto. <laughs> I actually like the guy. I mean, especially because he scored uh, goal number six in that the most famous game of all time <laughs> at this point. Uh, Barcelona PSG 6-1. An incredible comeback we made at that time. But uh, he scored and Roberto is a quality player. But there's nothing I... Like there's nothing really exciting about this player for a long time now. Like he's just he gets the job done. Yes, he's okay. He's when he's there, he, he's not failing miserably. He can do the job, but like there is no shine in Sergio Roberto. Like there's no excitement. And like I actually, I think I said that I, I don't mind uh, selling Sergio Roberto at that time to gain some money uh, a couple of months ago. And I, I and I still well at this time. We saw a lot of people, and so that's why we need him actually, uh, because there's nobody other than Dest now. But uh, at that time, I was saying, okay, we can actually keep Musavagi, who we departed, and and then um, yeah, and then and Semedo at that time it was. But now both Semedo and Vagi, they are not in the club. Sergio Roberto, Dest are. Okay, well that's fine. Now. Yeah, so defenders, they kind of stayed the same, except, uh, and yeah, they kind of stayed the same, actually, with Roberto in, especially. Um, but my emphasis was on the um, younger defenders, who it was, uh, who they were, Musavagi, uh, Araujo, which is, he's kind of playing, but again, if he was, if uh, Langley was not sent off, in the game against uh, Celta, I'm not sure if Araujo would have started against Sevilla or played at all in these first three games. Especially like if you look at the if you look at those three games, Ronald Koeman is doing the same things. He has only one plan to the game, and he has the exact same set of players who are starting the game and who are substituting, uh, who are being substituted, and who are coming in like exact same players the only thing like which disrupted him to have three exact same game plans is the fact that um Langley uh, got a red card in the second game <laughs> so that's why now he had to make one change <laughs> in, in his game which is bring in Araujo and the next game start with Araujo because Langley was not available so it, it's just a little bit weird to me that he wouldn't he, does, he doesn't want to experiment a little bit more because there's so much things he actually can do with this squad. There's a lot of quality, there's a lot of players. Well, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> and he's not doing it. Like, there's like, okay, he's playing with Frank, Frank de Jong and, uh, oh, I just saw my, yeah, my name and my, <laughs> and my number is 26 now instead of 10. I was, I used all the time number 10 
because of Messi, but uh, I decided to have my own number now. It's 26 because I was born in September 26. But anyway, so we have Frankie de Jong, we have Sergio Busquets. These two players are always playing. And we, this is a little bit weird that Sergio Busquets is always playing because Ron Koeman was the one, I believe, who said in, in earlier interviews that Sergio Busquets is not um, the same anymore. Is not that Sergio like magnificent Busquets we uh, knew about before. He is uh, having a regress. He is not at that top level anymore. And uh, yeah, he's just he cannot run uh, and play that fast anymore. It's too much for him at this point. So I wanted to see uh, Ricky Push next to Frankie De Jong or Pjanic at least. I mean, Pjanic is okay as well, and especially when he was substituting coming in uh, Milan and Pjanic for uh, I think it was for Sergio Busquets if I'm I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But um, Pjanic was looking good. Pjanic was looking good. Okay, like why won't you bring in uh, other players, try other options, and see how it is? Because these two, both of them actually, are struggling. In all three games we saw, yes, defenders were pretty, doing a pretty good job. Yes, these four people, okay, except this guy, these three people were doing a great job. And the only people who were struggling was Sergio Busquets, Griezmann and Frank Leon was in one game he was okay, in the second game he was not okay. Like so it's like a still a hit or miss with Frankie De Jong. But both of them are not like uh, for sure like solid options. You know what I mean? So why not bring and try this people? Maybe they will be better. And I know that Ricky Push will be better than Sergio Busquets as of now. Like that's 100%. We saw Ricky Push doing incredible things last season. He was the only, like, well, one of the or, or only bright spots in that failure season we had last season. And uh, why not use Ricky Push? I have no idea. And they wanted to sell him. What the fuck are they, <laughs> were they thinking about? And I'm glad that he stayed. But will he necessarily like get that playtime? I'm not sure. And uh, I hope though will new board will come. Uh, they will make sure that Ricky Push will be getting more time. And also, I'm I'm like I'm speaking with confidence that um, the new board will be there by January. But uh, let's not jinx it because um, if if the motion of no confidence will not work, they they will be till March and then. If they will get their hands on in January transfers, I'm talking about Jose Bartomeu and his crew. <sighs> they could, they could send uh, off Ricky Push. They could sell uh, another like players that we don't want them to sell. Like they are crazy. <laughs> you know I mean? They're literally crazy. Like they're enemies of FC Barcelona. <laughs> like they are supporters of Real Madrid. And Real Madrid is now new Barcelona because Real Madrid. Uh, used to who used to uh, buy uh, players like Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, Ricardo Kaká, or even before then, uh, like when they were creating Galacticos, Los Galacticos, like with David Beckham, Roberto Carlos, uh, who else is there? Uh, um, Figo, um, Ronaldo, the Brazilian striker, and more. Like they when they were bringing all this stars both times in, uh, with Cristiano Ronaldo and then Brazilian Ronaldo <laughs> other time uh, like they used to do that but now uh, uh, and, and we used to be the one the ones that uh, like focus on growing our talents making our talents without buying huge stars now it's all switched it's like Real Madrid now <laughs> they they uh, freaking bring in young young players. Well, they either buy young players or from their academy they, they actually get young players. Like we've seen Vinicius Junior, we've seen Rodrigo, we've seen Federico Valverde. Uh, I mean, there's just so much more people. Uh, like they a lot of them are young. A lot of them are young. 
and uh, not only young, but some of them they are from their academy, and it's like it's mind blowing. Real Madrid from their academy, uh, Edegor, uh, that Norwegian player, they, who they bought when he was only 15 years old, they nurtured him like seven years and then he played for Real Sociedad and then he was finally great there and then he came back and now he's playing for them it's uh, it's mind-blowing it's this is Real Madrid now like I want to support Real Madrid now <laughs> because they are new FC Barcelona we are new Real Madrid but I hope we'll, they will finish with that bullshit FC Barcelona I'm talking about and when the new president will come hopefully we will get back on track and we will be much smarter than this uh, last five years. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so what we were doing? Yeah, we we have kind of figured out with the midfielders, right? Uh, and oh, when it comes to defenders, though, uh, the the problem is I didn't mention uh, in the in the games we had. So Langley was sent off. Now Arohu, they brought him in. Imagine if something would have happened to PK, Umtiti is injured, I think, because Umtiti is always injured, <laughs> and I'm not sure why they're relying to him that much and keeping only two options in reserve. Because this guy had to come in and cover Lengley. If imagine if something happened to PK, Umtiti is not available. Who are they gonna play? There's nobody else in the club. They could have kept Todibo, Jean Claire Todibo. Um, just for that, you know, more like security, <laughs> and then, okay, but also, some bullshit already happened, and this is only third game of our season, and there's so much more to go. Alba, he got injured. Junior Firpo, he got injured. Now we have two, we had only two left backs. This guy and this guy, they're both injured. Who's gonna play here? <laughs> <laughs> My question is who's gonna play here now? <laughs> Just, uh, what happened here? Well, now they're trying to bring in Dest, the poor guy who just came in. He he cannot really like he there there needs to be there needed to be time for him to adapt, you know. But now they're relying on him too much. Please cover our asses. This too like our uh, management or we're so down to. Uh, <laughs> departure Miranda from our club or and before that even uh, made even well, like bigger mistake by selling Marco Corelia who is shining who is a big talent now uh, well please can you cover us uh, for us the left back position you right back uh, now poor Mr. Serginio Des he has to come in and like play not on his position not on his actual position play for left back and also he has to be looking good so that uh, you know the fans and the, the coach will say will not say oh fuck this he is not uh, he's not made for FC Barcelona he is just worse <laughs> yeah like in call in in level than other players uh, we need to sell him like there's so much pressure that he like he needs to be showing himself as a good player but now he has to do that in another position he was already in a new club in new um like uh, league because and much stronger league this is not uh it is easy this is la, la liga it's like the second best league in the world after epl of course so 21 year old just younger than me by the way <laughs> so I mean I hope he will be doing well and when he uh, actually came in uh, he was not bad at all he was not bad but again we didn't, we didn't see him much we saw only like for what 15 minutes anyway <sighs> you know what, I mean? what happens and there's only one so if he's moving here these two guys are not available there's only Sergio Roberto right now what happens if Sergio Roberto gets injured? He gets injured. Only one player in the right position right now. Like, you see what I mean? The, that Jean-Claire Todibo departure with Joan Miranda, these two people, they, uh, we need them right now. 
we we didn't believe him again for some reason and and um jean claire Todibo is a good player we bought him before like we actually we, we tried hard to buy him i think other people wanted him at that time too but no but like we grabbed him like we, for ourselves we needed him <laughs> and then they would never we never gave him a chance i don't understand that okay so we are finishing with our attacking uh, zone for when which is the most interesting for people i suppose uh ansu fati brilliant uh, yeah i forgot about uh, when i was saying ricky push is the only bright spot so far last season this guy as well but for some reason now uh in new season only ansu fati gets played but ricky push is not getting played but anyway ansu fati is doing great he's amazing uh, and i hope that he will continue be as fantastic as he is right now um mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> it's a fantastic player uh, and then we have uh, Coutinho who is doing really good and I'm so excited about that and then we have uh, Antoine Griezmann Antoine Griezmann we have Antoine Griezmann who we I mean I loved the guy <laughs> and I was really I had a lot of sympathy for this man especially in 2016 when he was like one of the best players in the world he was playing for Atletico Madrid he was so close to win that um, Champions League with Atletico Madrid at that time but he lost to Real and then he was very close to win um, Euro UEFA Euro um, European Championship with uh, France and in final he lost as well and in both teams in the both opposing teams uh, there was Cristiano Ronaldo uh, I mean I'm not really a big fan of Cristiano Ronaldo but I respect the guy obviously but at that time I was really uh, angry that uh, Antoine uh, didn't win and Cristiano won two times and uh, and um, I, I had a lot of uh, pity how you call it like and the sadness for the man basically uh, and um <clears throat> and then at, at the time i was thinking then if actually this kind of great player w would be in fc barcelona that would be awesome uh because he was so brilliant but then two years passed almost three years but he actually transferred in 2019 uh, from that time like we kind of really a little bit forgot about in antoine griezmann because uh, in 2016 he was on the hype he was like hardest thing but then uh, that hype kind of just like uh, got stale at this point I mean, there was no hype anymore he was just one of the like regular one of the one of one of the players you know he was not on he was not the hot thing and like we kind of totally forgot about him <laughs> and, then, and then he then transitioned transferred to FC Barcelona and um now i'm actually like and he, when he, that was happening i was like at that point i was like why do we need his this guy why do we need him for 120 million euros especially because we couldn't really fit him into the system and we still cannot fit him into the system second year already we cannot fit him coutinho uh he left to bayern he came back, he learned from the Germans how to play soccer <laughs> again, you know, got his confidence back and then we finally put him in the right system where he actually succeeds as a number 10, as a central attacking midfielder. But now Messi, who, who played here in the right wing, now he's playing here and now we're not seeing Messi as much, like we're not seeing Messi being the main star of the team, he's just one of the guys. And we, when we when we watch soccer, when we watch the FC Barcelona games right now, you don't see a lot of Messi anymore. Um, he's just like among us, <laughs> among players. You know what I'm saying? So I uh, and Coutinho is is being like really good at pretty much Messi's position because yes, Messi was here before, but Messi uh, like used to run to this position and then do attacks either pass to Jordi Alba who were coming here or you know pass to Nelson Semedo or pass to Luis Suarez or score by himself like dribble and then 
But anyway, the, the, the play was, Messi was always running like this, like shh, running here and then like that, right? But Messi's now already here <laughs> and he's not like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> it's like, it's, um, and he used to play here before, but now it's just something weird, like something not working for him because maybe he didn't play as a false nine for a long time now. So it's, it's crazy, it's, it's, it's upsetting and I, don't, I didn't even touch on Luis Suarez, uh, on Lionel Messi because both situations with Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez was very absurd. Yes, uh, it, it is, while I said uh, Luis Suarez uh, should, should, should be leaving FC Barcelona, um, they should have done it in a much more grateful way to the to our legend like not just like pushing away okay go away go away but actually like with a lot of i don't know like with not celebration but like actually just paying homage paying like doing a lot of like big tribute a big uh, send off like goodbye like maybe i don't know gathering a stadium and like putting it putting like uh, decorating the stadium for Luis Suarez, I'm not sure. Like how how we did to Xavi, how we did to Iniesta. But again, we are new Real Madrid because <laughs> Real Madrid. The problem with them was they couldn't really uh, send off their legends in a great way. We saw what happened to Casillas. We saw what happened to Raúl. Nobody of them got uh, uh, their flowers. Nobody got uh, applause. Um, when they were leaving, even Cristiano Ronaldo, they like I don't remember. Uh, they did they them doing big things for Cristiano Ronaldo. He just left, like transfer, and that's it. But for us, like we were uh, like saying big, like big, uh, like we're making big gestures for Iniesta. We were uh, saying a lot of thank yous and things like that. But now we definitely behave like Real Madrid <laughs> again. It's just really absurd to me. As a Barcelona fan, so now uh, we also had <laughs> this guy saying that fuck this board because they are not focused, they don't have a plan, they only cover their asses, like they, they cover the holes as as they go along. Uh, if there is a problem, okay, okay, now let's fix it. Look, look, we covered the we covered the problem. We didn't solve. It. We covered it somehow. And then the problem again <laughs> it splashes and the problem is still there, you know what I'm saying? It's just, um, it's like that. And so he said, I'm tired of you guys. I love this club, but you're ruining my club. And I kind of, it's difficult being here. I, I just don't want to play for this club anymore. Can I actually go for a new challenge? And they, <laughs> they, they force him in the club. They force him in the club. I was already thinking, um, Lionel Messi should have gone, should have left. Um, if he wants to, definitely. Like we, we cannot be holding him like a as a slave. You know what I'm saying? If our the best player of in our in our history wants to leave at this point, he has done his job at the club. It's not his job to make sure FC Barcelona keeps being good even after like uh, after him leaving that's the board's uh, job and they are failing miserably but he, if he wanted to leave he could be leaving uh, you know i was fine with that but again this board um they somehow was able to like keep him and like be behaving as a rat even uh, not rats but like not like they were lying to him uh, Joseph Bartomeu, he's a coward, he said, and he didn't own up to his words. But anyway, if you want to learn about it more, I, I mean, I'm sure you know about the situation, I don't want to talk about it again. But um, yeah, my opinion is, if he wanted to leave, he should be leaving. But at the same time, we know that the new board is gonna come. And I'm hoping that when Leo, Leo sees the new board, sees the new plan, sees the new ambitions. I hope there will be actually a good board, board, a good president. I hope, really hope that 
we will, uh, our club will be in good hands finally. Um, maybe this guy will actually stay and retire in FC Barcelona like he always wanted. Anyway, yeah, I think we actually talk about a lot of things. But uh, the problem is, I, have, I, I don't know what to do with this two. Like, I understand Roma Koeman's thoughts, uh, because last season, when Messi was playing here, he was always moving here, right? So, um, and we had, we had no threat from right wing. So, Koeman needed someone to be here and actually play as a good right winger. Actually stay here, actually moving here. So that Sergio Roberto doesn't have to run all the way like that, you know what I mean? So, um, so he put Griezmann, but Griezmann is not doing his job well. I don't know what's happening. I think this guy should be playing here. Put Griezmann away a little bit, give him some rest, uh, let the guy, um, you know, go go in like uh, uh, and gain, get some confidence in the trainings maybe, just relax a little bit and then like we will start playing him again. But I think Trincao, who was really good in the summer games, in the friendly games, I think we should give him a chance to play more. Uh, and, and he sub he went in as a substitute to our games and he was okay. Uh, this guy was also okay, but I think they should be. Um, well, I don't know, I'm not sure about Pedri because I mean, I love Fatih and uh, Coutinho is doing well, so I'm not sure about Pedri. But at least this guy, where, where you see a clear struggle, we can bring in this guy and uh, play him for a little bit. Let him start the game. Uh, because it's really difficult to come in as a substitute. I know that by my experience, uh, I'm, I'm not a professional soccer player, but I've been in uh, like uh, school teams, you know? So it's definitely much more easier to start the game and from there like to feel the game uh, and to understand what's happening rather than coming into like already going on combat, you know? So. Um, and we have this guy, I'm not sure. I, I hope he, I mean, I hope he will do well. Um, when we, I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm actually, uh, when he was playing in the beginning, he was not bad at all. And uh, he was kind of interesting to watch. So I hope he will, he will do something uh, worthy uh, by staying at the club. But I thought we're going to be already selling him. Um, this is not a player that in normal circumstances would have been in FC Barcelona, but he's here and, um, you know, fine. <laughs> but uh, one day he will leave for sure and it's gonna, it's gonna happen in a year or two for sure. Um, but I hope he will be doing, he will do something uh, worth remembering for. I hope so, I really hope so, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not wishing anybody like bad play for these players if you're a Barcelona player, I love you and I always wish the best for everyone in, uh, in this team. So yeah, oh, oh and there's also one guy who I like but he's always injured but I hope he will be playing more and he will be playing well and as well not only Trinka but Dembele actually can be positioned here. So you have all these attacking options, you have Dembele, you have Trinka, you can play, you can switch the positions, maybe maybe Messi, uh, like do something else with Messi, maybe bring him back again, I don't know, like, but you can, you can experiment, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can also experiment here, no much experimentation here for sure, in the defense, but here and here, this areas, you can be put, playing a lot of differently, so that you will be unpredictable, and um, actually you will see some interesting things happening with this squad because uh, three games with the same squad with the same substitutes that was already predictable already boring fix your problems by bringing in somebody else and see how it goes anyway yeah these are my thoughts on the season i hope i mean i will end with uh, the thought that um it doesn't matter if you have um like the best squad in the world or not it 
what matters is your game. What matters is the coach who can structure well the, the game, like who can actually create uh, best conditions for players who, and best conditions to th for them to thrive. And that's what Zidane did in Real Madrid. If you remember Real Madrid's uh, attempt when they were buying uh, Roberto Carlos and everybody like making the best squad in the world, they didn't win Champions League. You know what I'm saying? And with Cristiano Ronaldo, Kaká, Benzema, that time in the beginning, they didn't also win because they didn't have a, like a appropriate coach for them. But then Zidane came in, enabled them uh, to play the way they wanted, enabled, uh, just just created that condition, those conditions, uh, very pleasant conditions for them, and they were very united. And they were able to win three times in a row in Champions League. Um, players are important in the sense that, yeah, definitely, like, if they are world-class players, it definitely helps. But the coach is definitely important piece. And we didn't, um, I, I'm not, I don't want to sh put shame, uh, uh, shade on last coaches we had. Um, but it is up to them, for sure, how the team is gonna uh, play and if the team is gonna succeed or not so I really hope Ronald Koeman is the guy for this job I really hope he will suit here if not again as I said <laughs> already a million times new board will come in and then they will see what coach is appropriate for FC Barcelona but um, for now I'm actually excited uh, a lot of interesting things happening around this club and um, I will be watching I'm, I'm really also uh, happy with the jerseys, new jerseys and uh, yeah I, I am excited for the season and I hope all the best things are in front of us we will see a lot of success so yeah, FC Barcelona transfer review hope you are doing well and hope you watched it till the end i'm sorry for the lengthy video but um, i hope it was worth your time thank you so much for watching uh, hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to this channel and in the comments below your thoughts on the season maybe predictions are we gonna win the champions league are we gonna win the la liga uh what's gonna happen are we gonna win anything and uh, re and just comments on what you think about our transfer deals in who we bought and who we couldn't buy, uh, Depay and uh, Eric Garcia, who I'm fine with actually not getting maybe Depay. I just want, I just was interested what Ronald Koeman wanted uh, with Depay. And uh, if Ronald Koeman like wanted something, I wanted him to get so that he could realize all his plans. Now we see that he couldn't realize uh, all the plans because there's no Depay, so I'm not sure like he it's, it's a kind of a shortcoming um, But um, but I'm fine. I mean, I'm not really the biggest fan of Depay to be honest and uh, Eric Garcia uh, I from what I saw it was not really something special. But anyway, um, thank you so much again <laughs> I'll see you in the next videos and uh, yeah Bye